In the previous lesson, we demonstrated how we can take user input and store it inside a variable. That allows us to do many, many things. In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how we can take user input and use conditionals to interact with that input. Namely, we're going to make it that if the user types in one thing, the computer will respond one way. But if the user types in something else, the computer will respond a different way. Let's see this example. So we're going to ask the user, hi there, do you love coding? And then we'll take the user response using gets.chomp and store it in a variable, which I've called response. We can then use a conditional statement to respond based on the user input. So we'll say if response double equals yes, Recall that when checking for equality in a conditional, we must use the double equal sign. So if the response, if the value of the response variable is the string yes, now again, it's important to note that any user input that we receive through gets.chomp is a string. So we're checking to see, was the user input the string yes? If so, we'll run the code on line four, which will print awesome to the terminal. Else if the response is no, we'll respond with a different message. Ha, I know you're just joking. And let's end that conditional statement. So let's see what happens when we run this code. It says, hi there, do you love coding? And expects the user to input something. So we're going to say yes. And the computer responds with awesome. But now when we run the code again, and it says, hi there, do you love coding? And we say no. It says, ha, I know you're just joking. So this allows for extremely powerful interactions between the user and the computer because the computer can respond differently to different user input. Now let's see what happens if we type in something other than yes or no. So it says, hi there, do you love coding? And I'm going to say hello. We can see that we don't get any response in the terminal. And this makes sense based on what we know about conditionals. Because again, the conditional statement starts with line three, where it says, if response double equals yes. Now response is not yes because I typed in hello. So we skip over line four and move to the next clause, which is the else if statement on line five. It says, else if response double equals no. Well, my response is not that either. So it ends up skipping to the end statement on line seven, and we end up getting nothing in the terminal at all. Now, if we wanted to let the user know, hey, you typed in something that's invalid, we want you to type in yes or no, we can do that using our else clause, which we learned about previously. So we're going to add an else clause, which says else, meaning this is the catch all. If none of the previous conditions from our conditional statement have been met, that is if the user's response is not yes, and it's not no, then we're going to do this fallback and print out, please type in either yes, or no. So now when we run our code, and I type in hello, it says please type in either yes or no. So we've just unlocked tremendous opportunity because we can use conditional statements to allow our computer to respond differently to user input. And that's what most software is. Most software is the computer responding to different situations based on the way the user interacts with that program. So using user input in conjunction with conditionals is an extremely, extremely powerful and exciting tool. Now, one caveat that it's important to mention is that watch what happens when I run the code again. And now I'm going to type in yes, but I'm going to use a lowercase y. So we see that the terminal's response is please type in either yes or no, which at first is confusing because I did type in yes. However, this demonstrates how strings in Ruby are case sensitive. And the yes with a lowercase y is not the same as the string yes with an uppercase y. So on line three, when our code says if response double equals the string yes with a capital Y, Ruby says, well, the user's input isn't quite that. The user's input is yes with a lowercase y, which is a completely different string altogether. It is not equivalent to yes with a capital Y. So it's important to note that strings are indeed case sensitive. Now, in a future lesson, we will demonstrate how we can allow for more flexible user input. But for now, it's important to understand that strings are case sensitive. But again, we've now unlocked some amazing capabilities using conditionals in conjunction with user input.